Bukhim Haboim, welcome everyone. We're about to begin Be'ezras Hashem together in Dafnun Aleph Amid Beis, the new parak, the fifth parak. The Mishnah begins Vame Behema Yoitza Vame Eina Yoitza. Here we're talking about Shvisas Behemto in Isser Diaraiso. You cannot allow your animal to walk out and do a malacha for you. For example, you can't put a load, a masa, on his back. And he'll be doing a malacha of either hoitza, going from a reshus ha-yochi to reshus ha-rabim, or maybe going down with amos in the reshus ha-rabim with that masa, with that burden, that load on its back. However, if it's going to benefit the animal because you're protecting the animal, or you're going ahead and controlling the animal, thereby those things can be then carried out on the back of an animal, on the neck of the animal, on the Gemara, on the Mishnah brings various examples of these things that things that a person can go, can the animal can go out with, and what he cannot go out with. As follows: Yotze Hagamal, the Afsar, a Gamal, a regular camel, can go out with a leash that is attached to its mouth. You have a leash around the mouth of the Gamal, and that controls the Gamal. Thereby, the gamal can go out with that. Venaka bachatam, a type of camel that is much more um, aggressive. That camel is not sufficient to put a leash around its mouth, but rather you put a nose ring inside of this type of camel and then attach a leash to that nose ring. So thereby, he is allowed to go out with that chotam. Here we're talking about donkeys, a certain type of donkey, not an average donkey, also a very aggressive type of donkey. There, it can go out with a, a certain headpiece. They'd have a headgear attached to this donkey, whereby it would be also a metal bit that would be in its mouth, and it would be attached to a... A, a, a bridle, this would be the bridle that would be attached to the, the, um, the part that the rider would, would, move, would, would, would hold on to and pull in order to direct this type of donkey. And that would be permissible for this type of luptkia to go out in the Rishus Arabim with. Vesus Basher, here we're talking about a regular collar that it goes around the neck of the sus. That can be also on the sus because that's typically used in order to then maneuver the, the, the horse. The whole Balin Hasher Yotzin Basher, the Misha continues and says, all types of animals that the owner of the animal controls it with a share, again, with this type of collar, like a dog, for example, then it could also go out to the Rishusa Rabin, for example, and carry this share around its neck, this collar. You can go out, they can go out with this collar and also then be led together with this collar. The Mishnah concludes not in regards to the halachas that we're talking about, in regards to Hoytso and Shvisa's Behemto, but rather now it talks about being Mitaher. If this collar became Tome, let's say Tumas Mace, a dead corpse, came in contact with the collar of this animal, how you can be retired. The Mishnah says, Mazin alehem, you can sprinkle the afer para, aduma on it. In other words, you don't have to take off the collar from the animal, but you can keep the collar on the animal and sprinkle this para aduma, the afer para aduma onto the collar and retire it that way. And also you can toivil, that means you can take the animal and you can submerge the head of the animal underneath the water and that will be a tzvila for the, for the collar as well. You don't have to take off the collar. So these are two different ways of being metaher, the tuma that is on the collar of this animal. The Gemara now asks, my na'ako bechatam? In other words, what is na'ako and what is chatam? That we said in the Mishnah, Na'akosa is referring to a white female camel, very aggressive. And that which we said, the Gemara explains, the Zanoma, the Parzala. 
you can take a ring, a nose ring that is made out of metal, of iron, and you put it inside of the nose of this female white camel, and then you attach a, a, a rope um, or leather to this, to this leash, to this um, ring, to this nose ring, and that's how you can control this na'ako. The luptikim, the pumbia. Our Mishnah says a donkey that is also quite aggressive, that requires a headgear, headgear, and therefore that's the typical way of controlling when you have reins that pull the headgear, controlling this type of donkey. Omar Rav, who no chamro lubo? He says the chamro, chamora rather, is lubo from the place of lub. That's the luptikim that we're talking about. Bifne the parzala, the pagi parzala, and you can put the headgear that we were referring to before, where you have the headgear around the head of the of this type of donkey, and you have a metal bit that is in its mouth, and then you have attached to it is a leash, a type of reins that you can pull and maneuver the donkey with. The Gemara. Retells Le- Levi Shodar Zuze Lebechuzoi Le Mizban Le Chamora. Levi, he sent money to the people in Chuzoi, in this area, that they should buy for him such a donkey of Chamora, such a donkey of Luba. Tsoru Shadru Le Sa'ari. They wrapped up the money and they returned it. They sent it back to him, Le Mema, to say to him, the Nigre de Chamora. Sa'ari, to say to him that if you feed a donkey that you purchase in your vicinity, you don't need a donkey of a luba that is, that is maintained over here. If, as long as you feed that donkey regularly, barley, then it will grow up to be a strong, good donkey. You don't have to schlep to a donkey of luba. For us, it would be a six-month travel to get such a donkey, and therefore they sent the money back to him and said, purchase a donkey in your vicinity, just feed him well. Barley, and he'll be a good donkey. The Gemara now goes on to say, Om Rabbi Yehuda Mashmuel. Rabbi Yehuda said in Mashmuel the following, recounting the following question. Machlifin lifnei Rabbi shel zu bezu mahu. If they would switch types of collars that we listed in the Mishnah, what would be the din? Can one switch one collar, which is typical for one type of animal, to another animal on Shabbos? Or not? So he explains. Rebbe explains. Naka be afsar loti boiloch. A case of a naka, which we described before, to be this white female camel who's quite aggressive. That, if you were to put on that a regular type of afsar, a leash, that would certainly be an iser shvisas behemto because that would not control the naka, and therefore that's not the question. Since it's not going to be a protection for this animal, thereby it's considered to be a muscle and she, she would not be able to go out in the Rishas Harabim with such a with such a collar, with such a leash. Kiti Boiloch, Rabbi explains, what was the question? Gomal Bechotom. If you take a regular camel and you put a, a nose ring inside of it which a regular camel doesn't require such a nose ring, but if you put a nose ring that you normally do for a naka, for a female white camel, and you put on a regular camel, is that permissible or not on Shabbos? My, what's the din? Kivan the sagile ba'afsar masoihu. Since an afsar, a regular leash, is sufficient for this type of camel, thereby this additional type of, of, um, of, of nose ring would be considered to be a masoi and would be prohibited. Or maybe because it's a greater form of protection. In other words, it's not necessary, but it certainly will work and it'll be even better than what it normally has. Therefore, it's not a masoi and it can go out on Shabbos with. Omar Lefon of Rabbi Shmo, Rabbi Yoisi. Rabbi Shmo said in the name of his father, Rabbi Yoisi. Kach Amar Abba. This is what my father said. There are four. There's only four animals that go out with an afsa with the regular types of leash. Again, this type of leash we said is, 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 is going around the mouth of the animal. 
Hasus, a horse, the a parrot, a mule, the gamal, a camel, the hachamor, and a donkey. So Gemara says, mai. What does he come to exclude when he says that these are the four that go out with an asar? Lav lemeute gamal bechatom. Is it not coming to exclude a gamal going out with a greater type of protection of cham of a chatom where you put a nose ring in it? Thereby he's it's considered to be a problem to go out on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, no, you have no proof from there. Lo lemeute naka ba'asar. He's coming to exclude a naka ba'asar, meaning to say that naka, which is normally a very it's a very aggressive animal, one needs a nose ring. If you put a regular asar, you put this type of of um, of head of um, leash that goes around the mouth, which is not sufficient. That's what he's coming to exclude. So you have no proof about the question that we asked when you want to put something that's a greater type of protection, a greater type of way of controlling the animal, is that mutter or not? The Gemara now brings Mimas Nisetana, it's taught in the Braiso, Lub Dikim, the Gamal Yotin Ba'afsar. It's taught over in this Braiso that not only the Gamal that was listed amongst the other three before in the name of Rabbi Yossi, but even the Lub Dikim, this type of donkey that we said normally goes out with a head type of gear, it would be sufficient to then control this donkey also with an afsar, and therefore it would be permissible to go out with on Shabbos. The Gemara now says, Ki tanoi, let's suggest this is a machlokis tanoim, whether you can put a, on an animal a greater, a stronger type of leash to control it when it doesn't really need it. Says the Gemara, bringing the following b'raisa, Ein chayo yoitzo besugar. A chayo does not go out with a sugar. Chanan yoimer yoitzo besugar. The animal does go out with a sugar. What's a sugar? A sugar is a collar that's made out of a regular rope. So it's a very weak type of, of collar. So it says it again. The Tanakhama says, A chai does not go out with a sugar. It does go out. And anything that is protecting it, it can go out with. Gemara wants to then understand. What are we dealing with in this b'raiso? We're talking about a strong animal, let's say a beast like a bear. Would a sugar be sufficient? So we can't be talking about a chai gedoyla. Are we not talking about a small animal? Milo sagila sugar. Then certainly it would be sagi would be sufficient. In other words, then everybody would agree that it's permissible. So again, if we're talking about a big animal like a bear, then there's no room to say that it's permissible. Even Hananya would agree that's not Mishtamir. And if we're talking about a Khayakitana, then what's the reason why the Tanakhama would say that it's a problem? It certainly will be good enough for a small, small uh, chayyim. El alav chosu chatul ika benai. We're talking about a chatul. We're talking about a cat. Tanakama solvar kivin desagi libe mimsa mimsna baalma masuihu. Since the Tanakama says it's sufficient just to take a little cord for this animal, thereby, if you can do anything more than that, including this sugar, then it's going to be considered to be a masui, and it's going to be a problem of shvisas behemto for it to go out on, on Shabbos with. Whereas the chanan is over, called the tirusa yisei rosa liamrina masui, who any greater type of control of the animal is not considered to be a masui, and it's permissible. So we have a, we found a machlokis tanoim in regards to this question that we asked before, whether you can put a greater form of control on an animal when it doesn't really require it. Shmuel says that you can put a greater form of control on an animal and it's not considered to be a problem. The Gemara tells over the following Maisa that Levi was traveling together with Rabbi Bar Rav Huna. Kad me chamora de Levi le chamora de Rabbi Bar Rav Huna. The chamora, the donkey, 
of Levi, it preceded, it went in front of the donkey of Rav Huna. Now Rav Huna was a, Rav Rav Huna, now Rav 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 Huna was a greater sage than Levi. And beside their affairs and covered for a Rebbe or Tamil Chacham, you're to allow them to go before you when you travel. You should go a little bit behind them, a little bit to the side. But here, Levi, his donkey went in front of Rav Rav Huna. Cholosh daite de Rabba bar Rav Huna. Rav Rav Huna had Chalisha's Hadas. He was perturbed because, after all, it wasn't the proper respect given to him. Omar, Levi said to himself, Let me say something. That I will bend to Miyashif his Das and calm him down, put him at ease. Omar le, so Levi turned to Rabbi Rav Huna and he said to him, Chamor she'asokov roim kegon ze mahu lotzeis beprumbiya b'shabes a donkey like this one whose behavior is sporadic can it go ahead and use a prumbiya and go out on shabbos with a prumbiya? Normally, a donkey doesn't need a prumbiya. A donkey just requires a regular afsar, a regular leash that's around its mouth. So he's asking, but such a donkey that is a little bit uh, aggressive, even though it's a typical donkey, can it go out with a prumbia on Shabbos? A greater level than a regular donkey requires. Or Marle, so Rab, Rabba by Rav Huna answered him, Hechi Omar Avuch Mishmei de Shmuel. Your father, Rav Huna said the name of Shmuel, Halacha Kechananya. The Halacha is indeed like Hananya, that you could go out, yes, with a greater level of control, and it's not a problem of Shvisa's Behemtoi.